Once upon a time, a seed of patience sprouted. In a land where time seemed to slow beneath the shade of ancient Bali trees, there lived a young woman named Ilara. Her heart longed for meaning, for a path beyond her village's simple rhythms. One day, with the boldness of youth, she approached the gates of the Whispering Lotus Monastery, seeking wisdom amidst its serene gardens and quiet halls. The wizened abbot saw potential in Ilara, in her quick wit that so often tripped her over her own ambition. And so she became not just a novice, but the abbot's gentle challenge. He taught her meditation, the sutras, and the art of tending their vast herb gardens. Ilara's frustration grew. She wasn't here to weed. Where were the grand awakenings? One evening, she found the old abbot watching the sunset. Master, she dared, I want enlightenment, not vegetables. When will I learn the true path to success? With a twinkle in his eye, the abbot replied, Success? Him? Then tell me, would you call a mighty oak tree successful? Ilaran nodded eagerly. Why, yes. So strong, so long-lived. Yet, the abbot continued, it starts as a mere acorn. What we see as success is the end of a journey child. Let me share a tale. He told her of a princess, Nurai, willful and determined to prove herself as skilled a warrior as any man. She sought out the fiercest swordmaster in the realm, demanding to be his apprentice. The stern old master set her a single task, to fill a cracked vase with water from the river. For days, she toiled, water spilling with every impatient step. Finally exhausted, Mirai collapsed in tears. It's hopeless. I seek a warrior's path, and you have me playing nursemaid to a broken pot. And there lies your lesson, the master said. A warrior strikes true, yes, but with control. You have strength, princess, but it splashes uselessly. Learn from the water. Sometimes, yielding is the path to filling. Back in the garden, Ilara frowned. So, patience is the secret? Merely wait, and I'll have. What? Enlightenment. She scoffed. The abbot only smiled. It was years before Ilara truly understood. She became a monk in her own right, her quiet wisdom sought by villagers and traveling merchants alike. Her touch had even coaxed seemingly dead plants back to life, prompting whispers of her being a nature spirit incarnate. Yet within her remained that flicker of youthful restlessness. It was less a burning desire now, more a low hum that sometimes ached. One moonlit night, that hum became an urgency. A warmth blossomed within her, tied to no season, no illness. Old village tales resurfaced, of stolen kisses, of the strange magic of bodies pressed together. A wave of shame threatened to drown her. Was this wrong? The following day, the abbot found her in the garden, her spirit as tangled as an overgrown vine. He said nothing, simply tilted a watering can over a bed of parched flowers. Change came to Whispering Lotus with a new novice, Anya, a girl barely more than a child who had flood a brutal marriage contract. Anya saw Ilara's stillness as coldness until famine gripped the land. Anya fasted, prayed, grew weaker by the day. Ilara, in turn, led the monks in tilling the dry earth, chanting not for some divine miracle, but in rhythm with their exertion, honoring the partnership of soil and sweat. The day the rains finally came, Anya caught Ilara in her hidden ritual, swift, focused, then back to her composed self. Later, Anya confronted Ilara with an accusation of impurity. Ilara sighed. It was a long walk to the garden where the abbot had first compared her to an oak. I am a woman still, Anya, she said. To deny that is to deny a part of my being. There is a middle path. For me, 
This, it roots me. Did your starving bring rain? Anya, ever defiant, wrestled with this for days. But she was strong, and strength unbound by wisdom can shatter. Slowly, Ilara became her unorthodox teacher. To understand that release could be found not just in emptying oneself, but in focused containment. That to be fully present in one's womanhood, the ache, the strange power of it, was not a distraction, but a truth to be acknowledged on the journey. Anya blossomed her own way, becoming known as a fiery preacher who could quiet a riotous mob with her centered intensity. And one day it was she who journeyed forth, carrying the tale of her strange, serene teacher to distant lands. A tale of a woman who walked the path of spirit, yet never denied the vessel that carried her.